What would happen if you brought a pet home and mysterious and unusual events started happening? Things that seemed inexplicable. That's the underlying premise behind the character of Benicula. There's a certain charm to the concept of a rabbit with vampire powers, and part of its success is how Deborah and James Howe played with it in creative ways. The first iteration of Benicula came in the 1979 book Benicula, A Rabbit Tale of Mystery, and from the beginning they took the creative step of having the entire story be a manuscript written by a literate dog named Harold. The result is actually a humorous little book with a lot of laughs coming from Chester the Cat's desperate attempts to prove Benicula the Rabbit is in fact a vampire. It's a relatively simple book, but the Howes took full advantage of the concept and ran with it. There's an ambiguousness as to whether Chester is just overreacting or Benicola is indeed a vampire. The biggest hint of his abilities comes from him sucking the juice out of fruits and vegetables, causing them to turn white. It's a cute book, though I don't think it's the best idea for a children's book to have a dog with an appetite for chocolate. The book proved successful enough that more books surrounding Benicola, Chester, and Harold's adventures were written. Sadly, Deborah Howe passed away before the first book was published, so James Howe wrote the rest of the series himself. The acclaim that greeted Benicola also led Howe to becoming an in-demand writer, as he also wrote children's books as part of the Star Wars and Wizard of Oz series. Benicola was adapted into an animated television special by Ruby Spears in 1982, which deviated somewhat from the plot of the first book and also feels like a pilot for a potential animated series. While part of it follows Chester trying to prove Benicola's vampirism, the townsfolk get in on the act too when he sucks up the juice in their vegetables. There's also a whole mystery plot with a local factory potentially shutting down, and it's not terribly interesting. Fitting, since Ruby and Spears produced it, there's a very Scooby-Doo feel to the whole thing. Like in the book, the best bits tend to involve Chester going crazy. He's a vampire! Like Dracula! Welcome to my laboratory! Blah, blah, blah! I do not say blah, blah, blah! Benicola also clearly has special powers in this, which makes sense from an animation standpoint. I just did not find the presentation particularly interesting, and if this was intended as a pilot, I can see why it wasn't picked up. It's a very standard product of early 80s Ruby Spears. It took until this year for Benicola to be adapted to animation again, this time in a Warner Brothers animated series from Billy and Mandy creator Maxwell Adams and Looney Tunes character designer Jessica Barutsky. Fitting their involvement, this definitely has more of a Looney Tunes feel from both the look of the series and the humor. The show departs quite heavily from the source material, that the animals are now in the care of a teenage girl named Mina and her single father. The setting has also shifted to New Orleans, which the show takes full advantage of. While Chester remains the same paranoid feline, Harold's IQ has dropped heavily, though he's still the lovable pooch. But Nicola is a full-on vampire rabbit, with a wide array of powers and abilities, though this is completely unbeknownst to Mina. A lot of episodes revolve around a dangerous supernatural element that the animals have to stop, or Benicola basically fooling around with Chester. And these episodes are really funny. They're brilliantly storyboarded, the characters are nicely developed, and the voice acting is on point, with Sean Astin being a surprisingly fitting choice for Chester. Even more bizarre is Chris Kattan as Benicola, but that works too. He's quite the mischievous little bunny, and the physical comedy is great. This show has flown under the radar, but if you're looking for a new animated show with spooky elements to replace the whole left by Gravity Falls ending, Benicula will do the trick. I'm surprised that more people are not talking about it, or that Cartoon Network is not giving it the same push as the likes of Regular Show and Steven Universe. In conclusion, the book is a solid bedtime story, and the animated series, I think, is one of the best and funniest on the air right now. There's something immediately appealing about a vampire rabbit, don't you think? See you next time.